Hello, I'm glad you could join me in my study. If you were with us last time, you remember that we saw that an objection to penal substitution based upon the very definition of punishment holds that God could not have punished Christ for our sins. This is because it allegedly belongs to the very definition of punishment that punishment expresses an attitude of censure or condemnation and it's impossible that God could have had such an attitude toward Christ since Christ hadn't done anything worthy of condemnation or censure. I'm persuaded that this objection is multiply flawed and therefore without merit. To begin with, we need to get very clear upon the meaning of penal substitution. Penal substitution is the doctrine that God inflicted upon Christ the suffering which we deserved as the punishment for our sins, as a result of which our liability to punishment is removed. Let me repeat that to be sure we're understanding it. Penal substitution is the doctrine that God inflicted upon Christ the suffering that was due to us as the punishment for our sins, as a result of which our liability to punishment is removed. Now notice that according to this statement of the doctrine, penal substitution does not require that God punished Christ. In fact, some proponents of penal substitution recoil at the thought that God punished his beloved son. John Stott, for example, in his book, The Cross of Christ, says that no one believes that uh, God punished Christ. Now, Stott's statement is undoubtedly a gross exaggeration, but nevertheless, it shows that at least some advocates of penal substitution do not think that God punished Christ for our sins. Rather, they would believe that God inflicted on Christ the suffering that would have been punishment had it been inflicted upon us. It was the suffering that we deserved as the punishment for our sins. And we shouldn't rule out theories like this as penal substitution theories simply by definition alone, because on such theories, Christ does suffer as our substitute and he removes from us our liability to punishment, thereby redeeming us from sin. So in fact, a proper understanding of the doctrine of penal substitution leaves it an open question as to whether or not God punished Christ for our sins. The penal substitution theorist can either affirm that he did or that he did not. And if he did not, then that completely cuts the ground away from this objection based upon the definition of substitutionary punishment.